right, what's up guys? What's growing on? So we are gonna hit another awesome crop here at Heart. Still here with Josh Jamison. And this one is a fruit. Um, it's a staple fruit and it's actually one that I like to eat before it's ripe. And we're gonna be talking to you about papaya now. Um, Josh, you know, they actually eat them green very commonly here. They love them ripe. They do all kinds of cool stuff here with papaya and I think it's a great quick growing crop here for Florida. So this video is gonna be specific to papaya. Hold tight. All right, so we're gonna talk about um, papaya as a crop for Central Florida. Um, here at, at Hart, um, papaya is by far our number one most productive fruit. Even though here it's really too cold to, technically too cold to grow it. But through some basic techniques, you can easily produce it here um, where we get freezes even as low as 20. Um, because it's so quick to bear, even from seed, you can harvest your first ripe fruit in nine months. And um, after that, if there's uh, a freeze, you can protect the base. So this is an example of one that's frozen to the ground, maybe even twice. And uh, we protect the base with a blanket and then it regrows. And then in six months or something, you're harvesting fruit again. We haven't had a freeze in several winters here. Um, so the plants have just gone and gone and gone. And a lot of them are actually getting too tall now where they're hard to harvest. But um, for the past, I would say two, two and a half years now, any day of the year we can come out and harvest papaya because we have about 50 bearing trees and they're very unique in that, uh, well we could look right here on this plant. These fruits are getting kind of beat up by something. But um, so here we have a fruit that's starting to turn a little bit. So this one's almost ripe. Then there's less developed ones all the way up to here, all the way to flowers. So if you take a tree, say like a mango, it produces one big flush of flowers, flushes of growth, ripens the fruit kind of all at once. Papaya is really different than that um, because there's, there's new growth, flowering, fruit maturation all going on at the same time, which basically what that ends up meaning is that there's always fruit ripening on the plant as long as it's happy. And if it's continuing to grow, it's typically continuing to flower, continuing to produce. So if you have lots of plants, even if you just have three for a home scale, you're gonna basically always have papaya to eat. Um, they're also very versatile. The ripe fruit is delicious, especially if you grow good name varieties like Red Lady, Tainung, Nonyu, Red Maridol. Um, but you can get good fruit too by just planting out seed of a fruit from the grocery store. Uh, so you get good ripe fruit which is mostly delicious to eat fresh, but we also like to freeze it and you can make uh, smoothies and even turn it into like an ice cream substitute by just putting it into a high power blender. Um, but also the green, the green fruit. So about this stage when it's full size and still green, you can peel this and then use the flesh as a salad or as a uh, cooked vegetable. We use this a lot here. We make lots of like Thai type salads. So the salads usually have peanut butter and fish sauce and, and soy sauce and things like that in it. It can be cooked into all kinds of different meals. It's really a, a really delicious vegetable. Far easier to grow than about any, if you try to compare this to growing a zucchini or something like that, this is basically effortless. These trees are just out here. I don't irrigate them. I really don't fertilize them. I just basically plant them in a really good spot, get them established, and after that, let them do their thing. Um, they really grow for three, four, maybe even five years, but after that, they start to decline. And you, you don't want them around that long. They start to get tall to where you can't get to the fruit anymore. The key thing to do is every year to be planting out fresh plants. Um, so you have nice, healthy new plants coming on and you're kind of phasing out the old ones. It's really not a tree. It's, it's a hollow trunk, which is how it's able to grow really fast. It's a hollow trunk, it's a fast growing weedy type tree and sort of tree, I should say. It's actually kind of an herbaceous, the new growth, you know, I can just sink my nail. It, it's soft, tender tissue. Uh, so this would be, if I were planting a new garden, a new property, the, one of the first things I'll plant in this area is gonna be papaya. And I think it's actually better in Central Florida than South Florida because down in South Florida, there's so much papaya farming and it's in so many yards that there's lots of different diseases and pests that make it really hard to grow. There's papaya ring spot virus, there's fruit flies, there's all these different things. 
up here every few years we get down to 20 degrees and it knocks all that stuff back um, so a lot of people visit from South Florida and they're they're amazed to see the health of the papayas here um, because we don't have a lot of that also up here on the Lake Wales Ridge it's pretty dry they actually like this really well drained dry type soil they don't like soggy wet soil so if you've got papaya planted in a part of the yard that's gonna flood they will just the roots will rot and the plant will just flop right over they need to be in a, a nice well-drained area it's not to say they don't like water when they're getting going but after they're established they like this kind of somewhat dry condition so um, not only can you eat the fruit which we do eat a lot of the fruit um, green and unripe the leaves are used for different medicinal things the seeds are also used for medicine to get rid of intestinal parasites, which is pretty cool, though I've never done it. Um, but they're a great feed for chickens and pigs. So we have so much um, fruit here that it's not uncommon for, you know, a bird, like woodpeckers like to peck them, rats like to get at them. Um, sometimes you'll have this kind of stuff where something happens and they start to rot. No problem because they're a great um, animal feed. I'll try and knock this guy out and show you. Um, the chickens just really... This one... This one we could actually eat. Now this is about the earliest you want to pick when it's about a third colored is a good stage to pick um, because uh, an animal won't come and eat this usually at this stage, but it'll ripen up to full tastiness if you take it inside. But I'm going to show you. Now, people out there that are <laughs> buying papaya are probably cringing watching me do this, but if you had the amount that we had here, you wouldn't you wouldn't worry about it. So if you if you break it open, <laughs> it's a little unripe, so that's not working. Cut it open a little bit. The chickens will, uh, will eat that up. Look at them all over here. Yeah, they know. They don't really know what to do with it when they aren't broken open yet. But they'll wipe, they'll eat that whole fruit. So all the windfall ones, the half rotted ones, the ones birds get to, we knock off and we feed to them. And we've just planted in the chicken run maybe 10 or so papayas and every day we'll come through when those are mature and knock them off and just let the chickens eat them right where they fall. We're trying to move more towards growing all the feed for the for the chickens. So to, to start papaya what we do here well first of all you can just go out to a lot of times Home Depot or something like that and they'll have red lady papayas for 10 bucks so there's in my opinion nothing wrong with doing that or you can come to a nursery like Heart or Green Dreams and, and get them. Um, but also, a lot of people want to start their own. So you can start the seed in vegetable trays like these. Those aren't papayas, but um, one could. I like to seed them in October because they need heat to germinate. So October, they'll, they'll start and they'll get about this big. And then they're in our greenhouse through the whole winter. And they get staged up into one gallons about this size. And then the goal is that this goes out on the farm March 1st. Um, clearly I'm a little behind here on this guy, but um, if it goes out at this size on March 1st, that gives you the, the maximum opportunity for it to get big enough to be established and to make fruit before the cold weather sets in. The, the longer you wait, the, least, the less time it has in the weather it likes to get really established and start producing. So that, Papaya wants it to be 95, rainy, wet, hot, humid. They, they like that weather. They don't like the winter time here. They slow down. It really stops growing very much. Um, so if you're on time with them, uh, you get good results. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm the kitchen manager at Heart. I've got some papaya here that I'm gonna show you. Um, you know, we all know papaya fruit that you can eat as a sweet fruit, um, but there are a lot of other ways that you can eat it. We like to eat it green, 
We take the green fruits and turn them into fresh salads. Um, you can also eat them at this intermediate stage where they're more like a carrot stick. Um, so I'll kind of slice into them so you can see how they all look on the inside. So you can see this one's the darkest. It's nice and sweet. If I cut into it, it's got nice mature seeds. This one here, the seeds, oh, well, it's a little riper than I thought it was, but you can see not all the seeds are quite mature in there. Um, and it's still a lot firmer than, than this sweet papaya here. So at this stage, uh, I really like to peel it, scrape the seeds out, slice it up, and you can eat it like carrot sticks. You can dip it in hummus or anything like that. Um, and it's really nice. But um, the main thing I wanna show you is this green papaya. Um, it makes a really nice vegetable at this stage. So I like to, you have to peel the skin off it's kind of sappy, it has latex in it, so if you're sensitive to latex at all, you should probably wear gloves while you're cutting it up. Um, I, n I don't wanna say you should eat it if you have a latex allergy, um, but I do, know, I do know one person that has a latex allergy and they eat it. That doesn't mean I'm saying that you should. Uh, definitely eat it with caution if you're going to. Um, and if you have a very severe uh, reaction to latex, maybe you should avoid green papaya. Um, so you can peel it with a peeler, just like that. Or you can take a knife, just peel it like that. I like to do it this way, I think it's a little bit quicker. I like to peel it before I slice it up. Some people, prefer to slice it like this, maybe into smaller slices, and take a small paring knife and peel it, or peel it with their peeler this way. Lots of different ways that you can peel it. Um, so once you have it peeled, you can scrape the seeds out. And then I shred it into noodles and make a, like an Asian um, green papaya noodle salad with it. You can also cook the noodles. I like to use them um, as the noodle in pad thai. So there are a couple ways that I like to make the noodles. I got this at the grocery store. You can buy a three pack of these one of them is these shredders that make noodles. Um, and if you slice, it just turns it into noodles. This is definitely my favorite textured noodle. If you can get your hands on one of these, they're also, you can probably buy them on Amazon. Um, definitely makes the best texture noodle, in my opinion. Um, so you just kind of break them up into pieces like that. Um, so this is like the texture of your green papaya salad. If you get green papaya salad at like an Asian restaurant or something, that's, this is traditionally the texture that I've, the texture of noodles that I've gotten. Um, if you get on YouTube, you can watch people taking a knife after they've peeled it and slicing it, a bunch of slices like that, and then shaving it into noodles, which is really cool, but I can't do that. <laughs> um, and then this other really great way to make noodles, if, if you can get one of these, is over here we have this rotary grater. So we have different attachments. This is gonna be like the texture of um, like grated carrot. And the great thing about this is I don't have to peel the skin off. I can just run it through. And as I say that, it's actually peeling the skin this time. Let's 
so most of the skin, we did get a little bit of skin in there, but I don't mind a little bit of skin. Um, then there's also this fine noodle attachment. Where you can get a finer noodle. So if I'm if I'm eating it fresh, I definitely prefer this really fine noodle or or the one with the shredder, with the hand shredder. If I'm cooking my green papaya into pad thai or a stir fry or something, I definitely prefer this coarser noodle. I just combine them all into one though for the for this. So if you're gonna eat it as a fresh salad, um, I just like to mix up a sauce in a bowl and add it to it. So I've got some garlic here. Just gonna grate that up. A little bit of ginger. I don't measure things, I just kind of mix it up till it looks good or tastes good. Um, some soy sauce, some fish sauce. Um, I just have bottled lime juice here, but if you have like a homemade fruit vinegar or calamondin's really good, um, any citrus that you grow is really good. And then I like to add a little bit of this chili paste for a little bit of heat. And stir it up and put it on there. Uh, sesame oil is also really good in it. So there you go, it's as simple as that. It's also really great with any fresh herbs that you have, cilantro, basil, mint, um, rice patty herb is really good in there. Some green onion. If you have some tomatoes, some green beans, um, they're really good in there. So this is probably the most popular way, the most common way that we eat green papayas here. Awesome. Now we got too much sauce, not enough noodle. I'm, I'm too spicy for my preference. Too spicy for you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a... Josh, you approve? Mm-hmm. Stamp. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for those that don't like musky papayas, this is definitely the way to eat it, huh? Yeah, it, it's great. It's like, and if you like squash, like any sort of cooked cucurbit, zucchini, anything like that, this is a good alternative for when those aren't in season in anything that you're cooking, not just like this. Um, mm soups or stir fries or whatever like that. It's really good. You approve? Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, Emily. Boom. All right, so a lot of people are getting excited about gardening because of the whole coronavirus craziness. People are worried about food security. They've got more time on their hands, so they're starting to garden. And uh, people are here in Florida. They may not have much experience, so they're going online or they're reading books. And a lot of that information is geared towards the northern part of the country, which is on a completely opposite cycle of us. Um, you really need to be looking at Florida-specific information. Uh, today is April 20-something. Hot. It's supposed to be 95 degrees today. And the humidity is picking up. These are conditions where North American and European traditional vegetables do not typically thrive. So came over here to look at this. This is broccoli. It's, it's finishing up. These broccolis have been in the ground for six months producing, uh, this is shooting broccoli, so it keeps going and going. But these are crashing. If you're seeding things right now, like lettuce, carrots, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, you're headed towards a failing garden because the heat, the pests, the humidity, I uh, do not favor these things. This is all off, all these cooled season things are off of the table really until September and October. What you need to do is get shift your mindset towards the tropics. So 
it's not that people in Africa, Southeast Asia, and uh, uh, Central America don't grow vegetables. They do. They just grow things that are acclimated to those conditions. So if we look at our broccoli, we see this is going downhill. Celery over there, we just harvested all that out because it's done. It's too hot. Switching now into tropical crops. This is a sweet potato. When this was at its happiest, sweet potato won't grow. When Now that it's hot, the sweet potato is growing like crazy. So we need to totally shift your mindset away from cold, uh, loving, northern type crops into tropical stuff. Look at what people grow in the tropics. So for, for raised gardens, you're looking at sweet potato, okra, eggplant. There's lots of tropical leafy greens like amaranth, malabar spinach, Okinawa spinach, longevity spinach, sisu spinach. Um, you can grow um, tropical varieties of corn. Um, there's really plenty of things. There's actually more things you can grow that are tropical than cool, cool loving things. There are um, several kinds of beans, including yard long beans, uh, winged bean, cow peas. Cow peas love this weather. Black eyed peas are like a, a type of cow pea. Um, and then there's all these tropical things to, uh, tropical perennials to look to. So katuk, chaya, lots of things, pap papayas. So the, uh, the big thing, don't think like a European, think like a Central American for the summer months of Florida. When September, October, November roll around, then we head into cool weather, you shift up to what a northerner would grow in the summertime.